Welcome back to Coffee and Conversation. Uh, no coffee today. This, this is a protein drink. Uh, more about this later. Uh, Audie is on my desk staring out the window. That's what he's been doing the last couple of days. We had four days of rain, occasionally torrential rain, and I think he's decided that given what's going on with Mother Nature, he'd rather be on the inside looking out than on the outside looking in. So he has been a bit of a homebody the last two days. So he'll probably show up. Uh, I hope he does because I switched out his collar, so he's got a new collar to show off. We'll see. All right, yellow for Catherine for Lex's mom, for everybody battling cancer, we are throwing out our good vibes in the hopes that everyone has a positive outcome. Um, we are going to take a look at the intro and we'll be back in 22 seconds. So I had something of an interesting day today. Um, I went outside and trimmed the hedges, and then, because I was feeling ambitious, came back in and decided to clean the refrigerator. What a mistake that was. I usually don't get involved in like the kind of physically strenuous activity that is going to get me dirty on days when I know I'm going to film a video. And the reason for this is that means that after I do whatever it is I'm doing, I have to go take a shower. And people shower at different times of the day. I shower in the morning. That's what I like to do. Um, showering in my house in the middle of the day is an ordeal because a cat supervises the process. He's got to go in, he's got to check and make sure the water is the right temperature, and then he's got to taste it, you know, in case something strange crawled into the pipes and died or something. I don't know what he is licking the shower water for, but I, I assume he must be tasting something. And then he will spend the entire time that I am showering trying to get into the shower and out of the shower, like back and forth, back and forth. I have to leave the bathroom door open because if I don't, he'll be scratching at the door the whole time. And more than once, I have gotten out of a shower with shampoo in my hair to open the door just to let him come in and watch. If I do it in the morning, I can do it when he is out for his little 20-minute morning outie, and we're fine. He doesn't have to be part of the process. He comes in, the shower's wet, and he licks up whatever it is he wants to lick up in there. Life is good. But I don't really need or want the help. So afternoon showering, no, no. I did find something interesting because years ago, uh, I will research anything. And, and this, this is going to prove it to you. I did some research on when people shower. And most people fall into the morning shower, evening shower. You either shower when you first get out of bed or you shower just before you go to bed. And there is actually a pattern to this. Blue collar workers are more likely to shower before bed, and white-collar workers are more likely to shower after they get out of bed in the morning. Now, if we stop and think about it, it makes perfect sense. Blue-collar workers work hard. They, they get themselves dirty. They, they engage in strenuous activity, and they want to get that activity off their bodies before they go to bed. White-collar workers, on the other hand, their biggest issue 
in terms of uh, personal hygiene is to make sure that they are nice and fresh and smell good throughout their day, hence morning showers. So yeah, I really will research absolutely anything. Uh, and I found that was just very interesting. I have tried over the years to observe this um, with people I know. And so far, I'm really seeing that, that the studies are correct. And this is the way people do it. So yes, I played blue collar worker today. So I had to do that blue collar late in the day shower. Cat's not used to it. It was an adventure, but hey, we got through it. And then, of course, uh, some things I don't have to worry about. It takes about 12 seconds for this stuff to dry. So it's not like I have to, you know, say, oh, well, uh, I get out of the shower and I'm going to have to wait two hours before I make a video. No, I don't. I have to wait 12 seconds and my hair is dry. So the stuff that I did today, and that has given me my topic for the video. I had something else entirely different planned. But, oh no, we're going to get into it. I went out and trimmed the hedges, and that was not uh, anywhere near as much of an undertaking as cleaning the refrigerator. And I have no idea why that thought occurred to me. But when I decided I was going to clean it, uh, I pulled out the vegetable bins at the bottom and I think most refrigerators these days do have vegetable bins at the bottom. That's been pretty standard for at least 60 or 70 years. Now, I like old stuff, so I like old appliances. And old appliances did not have vegetable bins at the bottom. Um, well, they did have them, but it wasn't standard. Your vegetable bin could be just about anywhere. You might not even have one. So I pull out my vegetable bins, and apparently, somewhere along the line, I do not know where, because if I knew what happened, I, I hope I would have cleaned it up at the time. But something started dripping down the back of the refrigerator and made this puddle of Lord only knows what on the bottom. So the vegetable bins come out and I'm stuck with this strange puddle of Lord only knows what. And I stared at it for a minute and thought, how long has this been there? Well, the thing is, it could have been there for quite a long time because I no longer clean my refrigerator on a regular basis, mostly because I'm by myself in my home, well, Audie, but I don't let him go in the refrigerator. Um, mostly because, well, he steals. I, we know that. You, you, the Coke can, yes, he will steal. He will take things, run off with them, and I would just as soon it not be something that will decompose in whatever dark corner he leaves it in. So no, I keep him out of the fridge. So it's just me, so it never really gets that dirty. If something gets spilled, I wipe it up, that's it. And I'm thinking it was probably at least a year, maybe longer, since I had last cleaned out the fridge. And there was this mess. And uh, it didn't come up easily. I know, you're probably thinking, where is this going? So it's going somewhere. It did not come up easily. So what I did was, and this is one of my favorite cleaning tricks. I keep a very large bottle of Goo Gone. Uh, and I keep a little cleaning um, trolley basket. Uh, it's, it's a little plastic basket with a handle, and it's specifically designed for cleaning supplies so you can cart it around the house with you. And I also keep a small bottle like this of Goo Gone in there. Now, Goo Gone is uh, an oil-based cleaner that will remove sticky residue. And this stuff will remove absolutely anything. I have used it on the most awful cleaning jobs. 
and it's safe. It just sort of eats through whatever the mess is. And uh, there's a scientific reason for it. The oil uh, breaks the bond, the dirt or whatever your mess is, has created with the substrate. So yeah, scientific principle behind it. So eventually, after maybe 20 minutes of scrubbing this Lord only knows what it was, solidified mess, I poured a little goo gone on it, stuck some paper towels on top of the goo gone to keep it in place over the spill. And, you know, come back five minutes later, the stuff comes up. Like, fantastic. So cleaning the fridge, once I smartened up and said, hey, wait a minute, you know, sticky mess, goo gone, why didn't you think of this in the first place? Once I figured that out, the mess came up very quickly and easily. But then I had to do something that I always dread. And that was go through my refrigerator door. And I had to start throwing stuff away. Almost everything in there. And I'm going to show you some pictures of my refrigerator door. Um, I'll put them up now. This is what is left after I had to throw away everything that was stale dated. Um, and the doors are practically empty. One thing I did notice that I had not paid attention to was the bottom shelf. And that has these protein drinks in it, uh, which is what I'm drinking during this video because I realized I have a whole lot of them. And I'm not sure if they've hit their expiration date or they're homing in on it, but yeah, I gotta start drinking that stuff. So, here's the stuff. And it's actually, you know, for a protein drink, you know, it gets hot in the summer and you don't feel like eating, but you know you have to. Hey, this is easy enough. It's relatively tasteless. I don't particularly like the taste of it. I find it a little odd tasting, but it's low sodium and uh, it's like 90 calories for this. And it makes me feel like I am not, you know, starving myself in the heat. So yeah, I got to start drinking that. I don't know why I didn't when we had that batch of hot weather, you know, for the last couple of weeks, but I didn't. So now I'm working on it. I found stuff in that refrigerator drawer uh, door, rather, that was just humiliating. Um, there were two jars of jam in there. Um, one was apricot jam, one was cherry preserves. Both of them were two full years out of date. Oh, and this is the best part. And unopened. Why? Because I go into a store and I will wander around and see something really interesting. Oh, apricot jam. I like that. Well, the truth is, I do like apricot jam, but I don't eat it. It's one of those things that I might spread apricot jam on a piece of bread once every three or four years. But I got it into my head that I like this. I should buy it. And the cherry jam just looked really good. Both unopened have to be thrown out. Uh, a jar of olives, again, seriously out of date. That one, I believe that was um, uh, 2020 that that jar expired. Unopened. I have no idea why I thought it was a good idea to buy olives, but I did. I got it into my head. I needed olives. I bought olives. Um, what else interesting was in, oh, uh, a bottle of salad dressing that I don't like, so I should have thrown it away a long time ago, and uh, another, and this one is also unopened, a bottle of Smucker's Butterscotch Sunday Topping, and you will have seen that in the videos, because that is left behind. 
because that has an expiration date of 2025. So I get to keep that for another year. I don't even know why I bought it in the first place. I don't dislike butterscotch, but I don't make Sundays. I have no idea what else you could do with butterscotch, and I still have no idea why I bought it. And it was just like that. Uh, bottle after bottle, it's like, why did I buy this? What was I thinking? And why has it been sitting in my refrigerator? for three, four years on some of this stuff. Well, the olives from 2020, yeah, we know they've been there at least four years. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, not just because I want to share my piggy ways with you, but yeah, hey, I am being perfectly candid with you about my piggy ways, a four-year-old jar of olives. Yep. Uh, but there was other stuff in there that I, I'm not even sure what it all was. The ketchup, which in fact, I I had, I, last time I used that was a few months ago, and that was significantly out of date too. It was significantly out of date when I used it. So yeah, kind of a problem. So I wanted to talk about this because this is something I do, and I think we all do it. I will go into a store. Now, they say never shop hungry, and I do not shop hungry because when I am hungry, I buy crackers. <laughs> no explanation for it. I, if I'm hungry, I will go into a store. I will just head straight for the cracker aisle, and I will buy Oh, wheat thins, I need those. Ooh, Ritz, I need those. And I will load up a shopping cart full of crackers. A friend of mine used to tease me about that all the time. She would open my cabinets and say, two new boxes of crackers, somebody's been shopping hungry again. No idea what that is all about, but I do know I do it. And once I recognized the pattern, I was able to break it not by going out shopping hungry and not buying crackers, but by not going shopping hungry. Uh, because that is that is your absolute guarantee of buying stuff that you're really not going to eat. You go out, your tummy is grumbling, and the first thing you see, oh, I got to have this. You know, oh, look, pickled pig's feet. I need that. I'm hungry. Um, oh, and by the way, my mother ate pickled pig's feet. That's always my sort of go-to for the most weird and disgusting thing you can buy in a supermarket. And I, I see that in supermarkets even now. Pickled pig's feet. Lord, now that my mother is dead, I have no idea who's buying it. On the other hand, one of the things I buy for snack foods, and my mother had that ew, pickled pig's feet reaction to it, is sardines. And I get that from my father's side of the family. Uh, you know, these Northern European types, boy, you give them a little fish and they're happy as, just happy as clams. My mother, on the other hand, no, no, pickled pig's feet for her. But you will get ridiculous things simply because what you want to do is you want to eat. And if you want to eat while you're shopping, your brain just doesn't quite get it, you know, and it, it thinks you want to buy this stuff. Um, also, conversely, I have a hard time shopping if I've just eaten. If I've just eaten, I go into a store and I don't want to buy anything because I've just eaten. And the thought of more food is making me feel bloated and uncomfortable. Hard to win. But I think we all do this. And it pays to look at what our shopping habits are and what our food use habits are. And that's what I wanted to talk about primarily, not just, you know, I live like a troll with four-year-old stuff in my fridge. But looking at those patterns and habits. 
I fill my refrigerator door with condiments. What I do. Uh, and I need to, I need to really work on that. I need to just, well, I need to stop doing it. I need not to load up on things that I use maybe once a year and, you know, just sits in my refrigerator until I have to throw it away because it's stale dated. Part of that is, uh, again, I'll go back to my mother, the bargain shopper. I've told you about her. She would drive across town to save three cents on a can of peas. So if I can get a better price by buying a bigger jar of something, oh yeah, my mother's sitting on my shoulder saying, oh yes, you don't understand, you do need five gallons of mayonnaise. No, I don't. And I think part of that is I have to accept the fact that I am not shopping for anybody but me these days. So I need to stop thinking in terms of, I'll get a better price for this and start thinking in terms of how much money am I really saving if I have to throw it away in a year because I haven't used it. So I think the next time I go into a store and I look at those fancy little jams and say, oh, that looks tasty. If I really feel I need to get a jar, I need to get a small one. And if I'm not able to find whatever it is I want in a small jar, I need to go online and get it from one of those specialty companies that, that makes the little jars of jam individually, you know, get a couple of those. Because this was wasteful. Um, yeah, meanwhile, you know, my mother sitting on my shoulder saying, you never waste food, you never waste food. Remember, she was born in the Great Depression. So, no, wasting food for her was a capital crime. But we all have things that we do like this. If they say that in the U.S. we are wasting, each one of us as individuals are wasting many hundreds of dollars worth of food every year. Now that will vary from one person to the next. Um, I would imagine for me it's pretty high. Yes, do you want, do you want to be on the video? Okay. All right. Well, come on. Say hello. Here, let me see your new collar. There we go. It's reflective and red. So, but we all have our things that we do. I have my cracker buying when I'm hungry. Um, other people will have different things. Other people will go in the store. I knew one, one friend of mine who bought bread whenever she was hungry because when she got hungry, her first thought was, I need to make a sandwich. So, bread. But we all have our own idiosyncrasies like this. I, I am easily seduced by cute little jams. It's like, oh, boysenberry jam, I must have that. No, I mustn't. I'm not going to eat it. It's going to be like that bottle of butterscotch ice cream sundae syrup that I still don't know why I bought, but I did. I, I still don't know why I'm keeping it, too. You realize I am going to have to throw that out in a year. It will still be unopened. Um, I don't even know what to say about that. Well, we've got families with children um, in the neighborhood. Maybe I'll bring it over. Maybe they'll feed their kids butterscotch. I, I don't know. Uh, that would make my mother happy. I wouldn't be wasting food. But I am in fact, doing it all the time. Um, and I'm not a real big impulse buyer either. I shop with a grocery list. I usually think carefully about what I want and then get into the store. And for some reason, I will depart from the list. Not sure why at all. So 
I have to think about them. Well, we, we should all think about this. First of all, ever since 2020, food prices have skyrocketed. Uh, I can, I cannot remember any time in the past, including the early 70s with the oil crisis, when food prices have gone up so consistently for such a long period of time. Uh, and these are not small increases. So yeah, we need to be cautious about this. I don't know. It's not like, see, I don't have an answer for this one, mostly because I think everybody has their own unique circumstances that, that propel them into this situation. You know, you see something, you like it, but I can't even tell you why I bought the butterscotch syrup or why I bought that jar of olives. Now, I'll grant you the olives was four years ago. I, I'm sure I long forgot whatever motivated me to do that, but the butterscotch still has another year to run before it becomes stale dated. So yeah, I should remember why I bought it. Nope, absolutely not. So here is my plan going forward. Uh, I am going to stick with my grocery list and I am not going to deviate from it. If I see something I want, I'm going to add it to my grocery list. Then the next time I go to the store and I go grocery shopping twice a week, just you know, for the sake of getting out of the house, basically, uh, if I've had two or three days and it's been on my list and I can think about it, then I will have had time to figure out whether or not I'm actually going to use this item. Am I going to eat it? Am I going to eat all of it in the time allotted, which is, it's so easy. It's got an expiration date. You know, you just do the math and say, well, this expires in 18 months. Am I going to eat this? in 18 months. And I think if the answer is no, the purchase is going to have to be a no. And I'm going to try that and see if it works. Another one of my plans is I'm going through my freezer and I am not going to buy uh, items that I keep in the freezer until I have used up the items that are already in there. Uh, and that's going to be hard for me because I buy frozen spinach. Uh, I eat frozen spinach too. It's not like I buy it and it just stays in there. It's just that I buy a lot of it and I buy it all the time. So there's always a lot of frozen spinach in there. Uh, so the frozen spinach thing is going to be a difficult one. But I think I'm going to let myself go on that and say, well, when you run out of vegetables in the freezer, you can go buy frozen spinach. But other things, I have stuff in there. I, I could probably feed an army for a week on what I've got in my freezer. I don't need that. I need to start weeding that out. I need to start eating the food that I have in there and not going out and buying new food simply because I'm not in the mood for whatever I have there. You know, I need to exercise a little more discipline about this and not just say, well, I don't feel like eating this. So I'm going to go get something else. And maybe that's all there is to it. Bring back a little of that, that discipline that we all had when we were growing up in the 50s and 60s, um, and for some of us, for our UK friends, it was a lot worse because rationing was in effect long after the Second World War ended. So yeah, these are people, especially my age and older, who are very much accustomed to making do with what you have. You don't just say, well, I'm ignoring what I've got and I'm going to buy something different. And that is an old fashioned value that I think would, would improve my situation as far as all of this crazy food buying goes. Uh, and that's the one that I am putting into, well, it's two, 
that I'm putting into practice. One is the deferring a purchase. See something in the store, if it's not on my list, it goes on my list and waits until the next trip. And then cleaning out the stuff I have in the freezer before I go off and buy new stuff. So two-pronged approach. And I will let you know how it works out. The next major adventure is going to be the cabinets because I have not gone through my kitchen cabinets since the last time I cleaned and reorganized them, which was during lockdown. So that was four years ago. That's when I last cleaned and reorganized my cabinets. I would not be surprised if I found mice living up there. So that'll be the next little adventure. But I did want to share that with you because I didn't think about this. This is not something that was present in my mind, but it should have been because I cannot help but notice how many things I throw away every week uh, simply because I've gone out, bought something, thinking I was going to eat it, and I didn't. Avocados. That's one of my worst. I like avocados. And I will go out. These days, I will buy them one or two at a time. That's all. And if I'm not going to eat it that day, it's probably going to go bad. That's just the way it is with avocados. Bananas are the same thing. They go bad quickly. So I've started to look at that, but this has been going on for a while. I have been noticing the, the amount of food I'm throwing away because I buy things thinking I'm going to eat it that week. And in fact, I don't. So I need to get much more in touch with what it is I am actually eating and start to shop according to what I'm really eating rather than what I think I'm going to want or I think I ought to be eating because that's another part of it too. I think sometimes I buy things because I get it into my head that, well, I get it into my head that this is a much healthier thing to do. And you saw that refrigerator door. There are like a dozen bottles of this stuff in there. I need to show a little restraint. If I think I'm going to you know, deal with this, well, get one or two bottles. I don't need a dozen. And now I'm looking at this thinking, well, we're coming up on the expiration date and I'm going to be living on this stuff for the next couple of weeks. So, like I say, I will, I will monitor this and I will let you know how I make out. But hopefully this will jog some of you into taking a look at your own refrigerators, your own cabinets, or just sit and think about how much food you may be throwing away. Oh, and I will tell you, um, the one exception I will make on this is cow food. I do throw a lot of Audie's food away. He, we've talked about this. He is a very picky eater, and I will do whatever I have to do to keep him fed, even if it means picking up that dish of food, dumping it in the trash, and filling it with new food, because unfortunately, yeah, he can go out and kill his own dinner if I'm not feeding him properly. But I want to make sure he is being fed properly because he's getting older. And I, I'm, I'm concerned about compromising his nutrition. So, yes, I'll apply the rules to me, but I will not apply them to the cat. And besides, as you know, he steals. And it's only a matter of time before he figures out where I keep my bank card. And he gets on the computer and starts ordering cat treats on his own. All right. That was what I have for you today. Something that was just, oh, this epiphany I had. And hopefully I'll be able to change a series of lifelong bad habits now that I am aware of it. And now that I've come face to face with the very real consequence of these habits. 
which is throwing away food. And like I said, it's my mother sitting on my shoulder saying, you can't throw away food. So the emotional discomfort I have going against what my mother considered like a core value, don't waste food. I'll do what I have to do to avoid that emotional discomfort. So hopefully this has been helpful. Maybe it's triggered something for you as well. We are going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. Uh, for those of you who join us for just chatting, it's 8 o'clock this evening, uh, and that's 8 o'clock New York City time. And for those of you who stay with just the coffee and conversation, well, thank you for being here, and I hope to see you again next weekend. So, slideshow coming, and have a terrific day.